Ah, the humble spring form pan. Round, infinite like the recursive beginning of a cooking show. I've seen these on the internet out in the world for as much as $220. I got this from Target for 13 to replace one that I'd used for years and years. Uh, don't spend more than $25 unless you're getting a set of different sizes. When you have one, uh, be gentle with the interior with metal utensils so you don't scratch it, so you don't scratch that non-stick coating. Uh, you want to lightly wipe the inside with oil. I tend to cook it on, on top of a cooking tray anyway, just in case anything leaks out the seams. And when you wash it, you know, you want to undo this latch and spring it open, but leave it unassembled until it's thoroughly dry to prevent any rust. Um, but up until I found this recipe, I'd only ever used this for cheesecakes, but there is a whole world of things you can do with this. So don't, don't think of this as just a dessert item. Don't spend a lot of money, but get one for your kitchen. Rigatoni pasta pie was one of the first dishes I made in an attempt to impress my partner. I've had spring form pans for ages, but I'd only ever used them for cheesecake. When I discovered this recipe, it was so strangely compelling. Um, I had to try it. And like all good recipes, mine is modification of the recipe I've linked below, which is a modification of whatever recipe they found. So, how do you make this amazing dish? It's actually really simple. Um, it does take some time though, so allow yourself like two hours, but it's not that difficult. And I think you can do it. I believe in you. So, let's begin. For the ingredients, you will need a box of rigatoni. Come on. One large, this is a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. One small can, six ounce of tomato paste. Your favorite veggie crumbles. Uh, I'm using Boca brand. I think Morningstar is also good for this. One fat scoop of garlic. Uh, about half teaspoon each of thyme, basil, and oregano. Uh, good fat pinch of crushed up rosemary. Fat pinch of uh, chili flakes. A big fat handful of your favorite shredded cheese. This is Colby Jack mixed up, um, one cup or so of dried grated parmesan, about two tablespoons of oyster sauce, and I'm using red wine. Uh, this is Tisdale Pinot Noir. It's only six dollars at my local giant. If you're not going to use, uh, if you're not going to drink the red wine, like cooking wine, stuff like that, if you're not going to drink it, why would you cook with it? Pretty simple. So. Doesn't need to be fancy. Uh, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money on wine, but just a little bit, uh, it's good for you. Cheers. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees and bring a salted pot of water to boil. This usually takes some time. Want to stir this. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't clump up. In a separate pan, saute the garlic. Sweat that down a bit. Bring the salted pot of water to boil. Uh, Preheat the oven to 400 degrees. This usually takes a while. Dump in the rigatoni, give it a stir so it doesn't clump together, and then set the timer for about three minutes less than what the box says. It says 14 to 16 minutes, so. I'm gonna do this for about 10 minutes, then we'll check on it. You want it to be uh, underdone so it maintains its shape when you form it later. But in this pan, saute the garlic. And crushed tomatoes. Add your herbs your spices. The oyster sauce. And your glass of wine.
give that a good good mix together. It's smelling good already. And it really is okay to use the spoon back and forth. There's no meat involved in this. Add in your tomato paste. And a trick for getting every last bit out of the can of tomato paste, open both ends, take the lid off of one, and just push down with the other. And then just grab the lid out. Now you've gotten darn near everything. My dad taught me this trick. Blew my mind. Add a good stir, smooth out that tomato paste, and add in your veggie crumbles. Stir this once in a while. It's okay if these aren't done at the same time. Uh, Whenever the pasta is done, you can go back and add this. I'll show you in a minute. These veggie crumbles usually come frozen. Don't worry about that if you've got big chunks still in it. Um, as it heats up and thaws out, you'll stir it and stir it, and uh, it'll get that even smooth consistency. Don't worry if you still have big chunks of this uh, of the veggie crumbles in there if they've come out of the freezer relatively recently. As this cooks and simmers, those chunks will break up until you get a nice uniform consistency. I love cooking with this stuff. I always bite check the pasta just to make sure it's a little underdone in the middle so it stays uh, keeps its shape when you stack it up. Just want this simmering nicely. Pasta's almost done. Not much more to do, but wait. Good stuff. When this stuff gets, gets to simmering, be careful. It's like a volcano, it'll splatter up. There we go. This is about right, and just on time. Let me see if I can catch this. Well, you can see, hopefully, you can see how it's just a little underdone in the middle. It's burning my hand, but I do this for you. This is just about perfect. When this goes in the oven, the pasta will finish cooking, absorbing a lot of that sauce, so you get this perfectly done al dente pasta inside this uh, this sauce. You'll see it. It's good. When the pasta is done, drain it out into your sink. And then run it under cool water. The cool, cool water does two things. Uh, first, it stops the cooking process because you really don't want these to be overdone before they go into the uh, to the stack. And two, keeps you from burning your hands. This is hot. And you're gonna take these and uh, stack them up. I'll show you. Perfect. Shake water out, take your Parmesan cheese, take about half of it, give it a good toss, take the other half of it, Nice 
Case encoded. Ta-da. Now, the fun part. This is all fun, the hard part. Now that you've cheesed your pasta, take your springform pan, wipe it down with just a little bit of oil, even if it's non-stick. Wipe it down with just a little bit of oil, and I found it easiest if you tilt it up, just lean it up on something, tilt it up just a little bit. And then, stack your noodles, just like that. This takes some time. We'll speed things up. You will get cheese on your hands. Stack these like your wine cellar, like the scrolls of Alexandria, like a, a beehive, whatever you like, but like this. Be gentle with the, uh, with the noodles so you don't break them as best you can. Don't worry that they're different sizes. That won't matter. There you go. Your basic one pound box of rigatoni should fit completely in a nine inch springform pan with no, uh, no excess. So you may have to stuff them in a little bit, but everything should, should work out. You can do it, you'll be okay. And if you're one of those people that is uncomfortable with the texture that this makes, get someone else to do that for you. But next step, sauce. This is where I like the baking sheet to come in. Springform pans are usually really tight, but just in case it leaks, you've got something for it to leak into. Now, take your sauce. Ooh, hot. You can see it's nice and smooth. Those veggie crumbles have all evened out. Take your sauce, one spoonful at a time, ladle it on the top, and then gently kind of push it down in. You'll spill some, it's okay. You're still a good person. I usually run the back of the spoon over the pasta to kind of smush it in as it goes around. Makes the weirdest sound. Really want to try as best you can to stuff and work this deliciousness down into the noodles. As long as you didn't go overboard with the wine, you'll be able to use all of this. When the noodles, it's hard to describe, but you kind of feel when the noodles are thoroughly, thoroughly stuffed. Um, they're just not taking any more of this sauce. Uh, just spread the rest evenly as you can on the top. Perfect. 
like so. Oven's preheated to 400 degrees. Whew. Place in the middle, there it outs. Oh yeah. Bake for 15 minutes. When those 15 minutes are up, take it out, sprinkle on that uh, shredded cheese, bake for another 15 minutes until the top is nice and golden. And if you have a culinary torch, you can burn the top even more, write your loved ones a message, draw a picture, whatever you like. So, uh, see you in 14 minutes. Oh yeah, look at that. That's awesome. Oof. I was wrong, this is a four cheese Mexican blend. Anyway. You can't really go wrong or overdo it with cheese. Want to get it close to the edges as possible. Nice, even coating. Look at that. Back in the oven, 15 more minutes. Oh yeah. Just, ooh. <sighs> ooh. Just like that. Nice, lovely golden brown and I can't help myself. Let it rest and set up on the counter for at least 15 minutes to let it cool. And then uh, take a small knife, very gently run it around the pan to help separate any cheese that may have stuck to it or anything like that before you undo the latch and open it up. See you in another 15, 20 minutes. And here we are, back at the beginning, ready to eat. This is a hearty dish on its own, but you could pair this really well with a sweet, cool, crisp uh, salad, especially if you need to cut smaller slices to uh, spread them out among more guests. Pair this with the remaining wine that you cooked with. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you are safe and well-fed, and uh, good luck wherever you are. Rigatoni pasta pie was one of the first dishes I made in an attempt to impress my partner.